Ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Eddie Marcus. Usually, I come before you and I say that I'm spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. And I am, because when I think of human rights, basic human rights, I'm thinking of birth rights, the rights that every human being on the face of the earth have by just being here on the earth. But I seem lately to have to add to that and say that I'm an agent for the almighty power of life, the almighty power of God. Today I've indicated that I want to talk to you about what Putin and Trump talked about in silence where there was no one else around. Many of you have been curious about what was going on, what was being said, and you have no way of knowing. So I decided that today I have been instructed on that information that took place by the Spirit. And because of that, and the faith and the knowledge of God, I am going to delve into that. But, for, but before I get to that, I'd like to let you know that I am, and I'm here to, to remind you, to inform you, that I am a spokesman for that power that you can't see, you can't touch, and you can't feel, that represents goodness, and that represents love. <clears throat> now, out here working for God, I find out that I am more and more exposed as far as knowledge is concerned, as far as the ability to see what's going on in this world. And it is the love for God that wants to help you in this situation that I'm here doing it. Right now, we've just had a blizzard here in Minnesota. I mean, for the winter, we had so much snow that it took me for days to remove that snow, to get it out, to shove it, it away. And, um, well, we thought winter was basically gone. I was able to walk across the lawn on grass, walk down the carport on the concrete, and it was almost 70 degrees. And in the matter of just a few hours, which happened started yesterday, I got as much snow on the deck, as much snow in the yard, as much snow on the cars that I had from the entire winter, it seemed. And I got to get it out. I'm reminded that not too long ago I ran for mayor of the city of Woodbury, Minnesota. And having been here in Minnesota for quite a few winters, especially over here, one of the things that I offered the citizens of uh, this city was that the elderly would have to not worry about the snow removal any longer because that was one one thing I would go after to make sure that that snow was removed from their driveways and from their passageways in and out of the house. And I really understand that, ladies and gentlemen, because you look at me, I'm glad to say that in a few months I'll be 70 years old. That was a time I wouldn't be feeling so glad about that. But I've been here for a while. I've been around. I've seen a lot of stuff, and I'm still here. And I'm knowing that even after... This blizzard that we're having right now, it hasn't gone any place. It's supposed to be here all day. I am going to have to get out there and shovel my way out of here. And one of the main reasons I got to do it, I got an appointment around 1 o'clock today where I will be talking with one of the major church organizations here in Woodbury. Uh, it's a Lutheran church, one of the bigger churches in the city. And I'm supposedly having an, a conversation with them because... I have been given the mission of reminding people who God is, reminding people what God's purpose is, reminding people about what God wants. And so while I got all the information to share with you, I want to make sure that you understand that everything that I'm doing, I'm doing it from the approach that God wants to liberate you from this prison, from this bondage that you are in is no different than when Moses was down in Egypt land telling old Pharaoh to let the people go, telling now, telling people that who are oppressed, who are bent down by systems of government that are designed to work against the master, that God knows what's going on. God wants the people released. But more than just that, he wants you to understand that you've got the power to determine whether they do or not. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I think what I'd like to share with you just to give you some background, I believe it was about 33 years ago, 
As far as I was concerned, the crisis was just as apparent then as it is now about the American people and its system of operation. I remember speaking to my uh, wife and, and I was really upset about the housing crisis. People were being robbed of their housing. People didn't have money to pay their costs. And so I, as a spokesman, as one that recognized the love of God, I asked her, let's move up to the state capitol. <laughs> In fact, I got my son, I believe is 34 years old today. Not today, but now he's 34 years old. And at that time, he was one. So I asked my wife, I said, let's move over to the state capitol because we got to draw attention, not only to the problem, but put ourselves in a position that maybe someone will listen to the solutions that I've been given. <laughs> well, you know my wife thought I was a fool. And so she, we didn't move over to the state capitol. However, I did move over there alone. And I stayed on the state capitol, I believe, for about 10 days. And I'd protest during the day with my little signs, hoping somebody would pay attention, hoping someone would be curious enough to ask some questions. Even though my signs spoke a statement, I periodically, would, when I saw a crowd or a group of people, I would start giving voice. But the bottom line is no one paid attention like they haven't paid attention since and like they aren't even paying attention today. Nevertheless, I had to do what I had to do. And so, having said that, ladies and gentlemen, in conjunction with that, I want to share with you what's going on right now. Many of you say, well, what was Trump and Putin talking about when no people who were able to record what was going on, people who were able to give uh, uh, information about what went on, what were they talking about? And you don't know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, first of all, let me share with you. Wherever dictators are, I don't want you to think that it was a madman just deciding that he was going to take control of a nation. No, my friends, it doesn't happen that way. Because these nations are controlled by people who have not been selected or elected by the national population. These are people who have amassed so much wealth that they basically can do anything they want to do. And they connect themselves with other people who are in positions of wealth and opportunity just like they are. And they connive and come together and set up organizations within themselves. They set up agendas that will address things that are important to them. And first of all, I want you to know that they have no connection with God whatsoever. Because the fact that they have amassed of the wealth and that power, it's because they abused all of the basic principles of human life. And they have trusted in it. They said it worked. Where was God to prevent them from doing the things that they did? So they have no faith in God. And they know that your faith means little. To say that, that also means that those of you who think that the Pope is a vicar, or some person on earth that uh, is supposed to speak for God. In the beginning, I don't know if that was ever established or not. I'm not going to say it wasn't, because I really don't know. I heard that it was, but I've heard all kinds of lies. I do know, however, that the Pope does not speak for God. The Pope is in the same position as all of the other rich people, super rich people, that have separated themselves from all of society. And so what God might have an interest in, they don't know, nor do they care. And not only the Pope, I would say that those of you who are listening to people who say they got the voice of God, that they're sharing information with you about God, they're in the same position of those that I've just spoken about. In fact, the Pope, your preachers and elders, if they knew God, I mean, I'm talking to you, ladies and gentlemen, if they knew God, they would not even be able to sleep at night. That's the kind of love that God has. God has the kind of love that anybody who has the spirit of God and that love within them would never be able to sleep because of the pain and suffering that others 
have to endure every day and every night. And I'm not just talking about removing snow, even though if I had the ability or the assistance to help me editor, I'd share that snow with you. But I don't have that. So I have to say that I have to do it myself. And so having to stand before you and share with you about what's going on in the heart and mind and love of God. I have to do that. And I'm so gracious that I have been spared the doubt. You know, many people believe in God, but belief doesn't mean anything. It's just like the wind. It blows to the east. That's, the, that's your belief. It blows to the west. That's your belief. North and south, up and down. That's your belief. That's how, that's how belief works. But knowledge, my friends, is altogether different. When you know, you know. And so when it comes down to God, there might have at one time been a belief, but there is no belief. I say to you right now, even if it's trying, if it might be edited out and try to misconstrue what I'm saying, I do not believe in God. Why don't I believe in God? Because God showed me the hand of God and removed all doubt. So I stand here confidently before you to tell you that there is a God, a wonderful God, a magnificent God, that in spite of all your sins, in spite of all your ignorance, loves you to, to life. And that's why I'm standing here before you, knowing that you basically are not going to listen to anything I say. But God still loves you, and he wants you to get this information, and he found a person that has committed themselves to just do what God wants done. And I'm standing here before you. Now, these people that I say who have detached themselves, they are secret societies. That's why they call them secret. They don't want you to know what they're doing. And if you ever know, it's because they have decided that it was okay for you to know it at that point in time. It has moved to the point that they can share it with you now because you have basically accepted it as routine. You have accepted it as normal. So when Trump and Putin get together, or whatever a dictator is that Trump get together with, they are talking about taking over. They are talking about the agendas of the powers that you know nothing about and what their plan is and how they, these ones will be used in the plan. Now, the fact that Putin and these other dictators, along with Trump, are in these positions is because they don't believe in God. They don't know God, nor do they believe in God, nor do they care about God, or nor do they care about you. And it is known they have done this for quite some time. They have stood out like a light saying, this is who I am. I don't give a darn about anybody but myself, and I am the greatest, and there are none greater than me. This is what they say. Now, what these powers have recognized is that you, the people, all over the world, are basically the same. Sure, you got different systems that you've come up under, and under these systems, they have allowed you to have a little bit more liberality than perhaps others. Others who might have had it at one time, but have lost it. And so, here in America, we find ourselves in that position. We find ourselves, as the American people, no different than the German people who oppressed the so-called Jews back what they call a Holocaust period. No different. I know when you think about it, you read about it, you think you're better than they are. In fact, you are no different than the people in Russia who have succumbed to the suppression that Putin has put them under. This is what they talk about. They talk about where in the Philippines, how the, 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 the leader there gets over. Talk about in North Korea how the leader there gets over. They get over because you're basically ignorant and you've got no true faith. You are afraid to die. And all they got to do is put some people in, in, in place like themselves. People who <laughs> are just like they are. For instance, in America, you get a guy like uh, Barr. You put him in position. Now, he will protect every lie that the bigger lie expounds. They will protect it. He, my friends, just like the Kavanaugh that they put in the Supreme Court, these guys are said that to protect evil, to make sure that evil gets a chance to trample on you. Now, I know the American people have always thought that they had a muscle, 
that they thought they had a system of justice that would allow them to withstand an, an onslaught like this, but in reality, they don't. They are just like Barr telling the people that uh, he's going to support Trump, who has said that I don't care what other people have done in the past, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. The public knew me, and they put me in office, so I'm not thinking about you. And while you sit back there, the Congress, that part of Congress who still got a little a decency about them, who thought that they were going to be able to shake uh, the trees and make the snow fall off, finding out that it's not going to be that easy, especially now since you got people in place. Well, these are the kind of things that Trump get together and talk with Putin about. And it didn't just start when Trump became president. It happened even when Trump was back there trying to get money from Russia to do the things that he has been done. Even then, that plan was set in motion to be able to manipulate you, the American people. And you find out that your system of laws does not mean anything. Only when people submit to it, that those who reject it, you can't do a thing about it. You got a president who says, I'm not going to share my taxes with you. He means it. And he's getting what the Treasury Department, he'll get, and the courts, they're going to back him all the way. And at the same time, while he's doing this, you got millions and millions of American people that's filing their taxes right now and would not dare not file them because of the penalties that would be imposed on them. When you got a president that says it doesn't mean anything, what does that say about the American people? It really is a cry and shame, ladies and gentlemen, but this is the reality of the day that we are living in. In America and all over the world, you uh, have been programmed, those of you who go along with the things that's happening, to believe in superiority. Believe that there are those that's better than you. I'm reminded almost every day about this fact. When, for instance, we got the prince and his wife, they're going to have a baby. And all of a sudden, having this baby is so important. I'm asking you, there are thousands of babies that are born every day. How many do you hear about? If they're not connected directly to you, you don't hear it. So what is it that makes this baby so important that they have to put it on the national news all over the world? This baby is being born. This is the prince baby. This is the princess baby. Shouldn't make you sick that they are holding these people up in high esteem like that. And why are they doing it? To remind you that there are others that's important and you are not important. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is my purpose, to let you know that God says you are. God wants you to know that every last one of you are important, and none is more important than any of the others. I don't care who set themselves aside. I don't care who set themselves aside in privacy, who make up their own laws and rules and find some way to get others to abide by them. I want you to know, and I'm going to repeat this again, every time I talk to you, I want to share this with you. Every human being on this earth did not slip in did not just find some way to creep in. You are here because the Lord God Almighty permitted you to be here. The fact that you are alive, the fact that you got a body and you can breathe and you can see, even if you can't see, if you can breathe, you have indwelled in you the spirit of the Almighty God. But you got choice about the life that you're going to live, the life you're going to experience. And God, by, by love, gives you that choice so that you can say, I am a human being. I accept God or I reject God. This is key. So when God puts you here, he knows that there might be one of you, might be two of you, but if there are two of you that are the opposite sex, there are going to be many of you. You're going to do some stuff that's going to cause you to multiply and multiply and multiply to 300 million plus in the United States to 7 or 8 billion all across the land. But that magnificent God of love, listen to me, sisters and brothers, made sure that even in the contemplation of putting you here and creating this earth, that was embedded within the cracks and crevices of this earth. Every resource necessary to sustain any dream that any of you, eight billion of you, might ever have. It's either in the earth, on the earth, 
or above the earth. It's either seen or unseen. And that great magnificent God instilled within each of us a gift. Something that we want to do. Something that we can engage ourselves in the process of recognizing and extracting from these resources. And building and creating and manifesting whatever it is that we the human beings determine is essential for our lives. And there is nothing that's supposed to knock that. However, every action has its consequences. If it's a, a good action, it's a, it's a loving action, that means it works for you. So that's God speaking to you. If it comes back and it's bad and it does not work for you, that's God speaking to you. Leave it alone. But there's another spirit out there that grabs hold to it and come to you and tell you, convince you. Believe it, ladies and gentlemen. Can't create a darn thing. Can't cause anything to manifest but come to you and deceive you and tell many of you that you are more important than others. When God said there's none other that's more important. This one comes to you, this spirit comes to you and they don't believe it. You are more important. You deserve more. Now these are the ones that you can recognize as your liars, your cheaters, your deceivers. They are the ones who create hate and poverty and bigotry and racism. And it has worked. It has worked. Well, and many of you play a major part in it and don't know it. You don't know it because it's been going on for centuries and centuries and centuries since the first lie that was told to humankind that was accepted. And so now today, 21st century, 2019 in the United States, you have accepted that lie and you think it's real. What This is what Trump has proven. He lies before your face every day. Two years lying before your face. And all of a sudden, you don't know what the truth is. Is it what someone else said or is it what Trump said? You are as confused as a piece of plastic on a porch trying to keep snow off blowing in the wind. The snow gets all in there and the porch is just covered with snow. That's how you are, covered with bull. And you can't even recognize it. So what am I saying? I am saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, that that liar has been so effective till not only do those who say they love God, those who say they preach to you about God, not only are they blind, you are too. You are so blind that you're caught up in a system that permits the poverty. You are so blind that you are caught up in a system that says it's okay for some to, to suffer, to have pain, to be homeless, to not be able to continue their education for lack of money. You go along with it every day. Why do you go along with it? Because you don't have to suffer those pains. When you see people come together with plaques out there protesting, they come together because each one of them finds something that's demoralizing and they just pissed off about it and they come out there with those signs they're standing up for uh, gay rights or they're standing up for health care or they're standing up for some more money to do this and some money to do that recognizing anybody that can see it is that they're all divided they're all concerned about their particular interest the thing that their plaque represents and this my friends is the thing that keeps you divided God is saying put those plaques down if a system is in operation that hurts this one and hurts that one and hurts this one, why are you standing up for one hurt? Stand up for all hurts. Then you can see the truth. Then you'll know what to do. And when you stand up and know what to do, you tell the devil to go to hell. And everybody that's standing up representing the devil will recognize that you're not going to take it anymore. And then just maybe, just maybe, they will give up and come over to God's side. But until you can do that, my friends, the devil got the whole world working for it. And you got a guy like me standing up here telling you this. Remember, I'm not just talking now. I have sought the office at least three different times for the President of the United States to tell you this, to use that platform, to speak to you about this. And each time I was a joke. Nobody paid any attention to me. Nobody paid any attention to what 
I'm talking about why. Because it's not the normal conversation. It's not the conversation that everybody else is running on that you have been programmed to believe is essential. And this one, my friends, you have rejected totally. And that is the one that gave you the demon that's in the White House today. So I'm saying to you, if you want to know what Putin is talking about, see what Trump is doing. That's what they talked about. They put the plans in operation, but they didn't come up with the plan. The plans were initiated by the demons that you don't know anything about. And they are just carrying them through to keep you in bondage, to kill you. But I'm not just talking to you to give you that information. I'm telling you this, ladies and gentlemen, that you still got the power. You can stop it dead in this track. All you got to do is wake up and say, there's going to be no more suffering. From now on, everybody that wants a job, got a job. And mean it. Everybody that wants health care, got it. Why? Because God is the author of health care. And nothing should stop it from anybody that needs it. Anybody that needs education, unlimited and unrestricted, should have it and nothing should stop it. Why? Because God is the author of education. And you know it and you're going to guarantee that God's plan go forward. Nobody's going to be homeless. Nobody's going to be hungry. Nobody's going to be clothesless. Why? Because God designed it that they would never have to. And you know that. And because God lives in you, you're not going to allow it. You don't give a heck what anybody says. It's over because you're not going to take it. And the only way you can do that, my friend, is to be connected to the real God. You can't do that as a Democrat just because you don't like the Republican. You can't do that as a Republican just because you don't like the Democrat. You can't do that as a black man because you don't like white people. You can't do that as white people because you don't like black people. You got to do it because there's a living fire burning inside of you that won't go out. Then you got power. And if there's other power that's required, it will come down from heaven just like the rain. But, my friend, it's not coming down like that when your choice is to be blind. When your choice is to walk with the devil hand in hand, it ain't going to happen. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope I haven't wasted your time. I couldn't sleep. I, I called myself going to bed early last night so I can get some hours of sleep because I know I can't sleep all through the night. Because I'm thinking about the pain and suffering. Now, you know, somebody said, well, Eddie, why do you think about the pain and suffering and others don't? I learned a long time ago, my friends, that if you are above the problem, most of the time you don't see the problem. So if you want to know what the problem is, be in the problem. And you can see exactly what it is. But don't just be there. Be there for a purpose. Be there with a goal. And my goal is to recognize what brings it on, but not only to bring it on, what to eliminate it, to get you out, to end it. And I ain't got but one thing to say to you, my friends. God. God is the answer. So I want to thank you for giving me this your time. Once again, this is Eddie Marcus. I'm so glad to be able to say that I know God. I don't believe. I know. And I don't need any preacher. I don't need any book. I don't need any story to lift God up. I have the evidence. And to you, I am the evidence. Till next time, bye-bye.